Meanwhile, uh, cultural reactions to Joe Biden are all in the same direction, which I think is pretty mm-hmm. interesting. It's there's there's not much of the split <laughs> screen that you're seeing on Capitol Hill uh, reflected in the broader culture, which you know has been pretty friendly to Biden over the mm-hmm. last several years. Let's start with this sot from Stephen Colbert this week. Now, the competing virtue here, there's another competing virtue, and that is self-sacrifice. And self-sacrifice takes a particular kind of courage. And that is a courage I believe Joe Biden is capable of. I believe he's a good enough man, he is a good enough president to put the needs of the country ahead of the needs of his ego. And however painful that might be, it is possible handing leadership to a younger generation is the right thing for the greater goodest. (laughs) Or good as, either one. As good as versus goodest. The, the, good, the good as. I was, I, was trying, I was listening to it again just for fun. It's like the good as. Uh, if you haven't seen, by the way, the entire Jon Stewart monologue, it's, it's so good, like start to finish. And it's like, how on earth did we even survive without Jon Stewart <laughs> on the air for as, as long as we, we made it? And I, we didn't. Like, basically, the Republic fell apart. You're saying it, yeah, this is the most like Gen X take that you have is we desperately need John Stewart to, there's we, we a fine him, line between back. disaster and. Yes, and at least he makes me laugh. Let, let's roll, let's hold John Stewart. Get on board or shut the f- up is not a particularly compelling pro-democracy bumper sticker. <laughs> Nor is, what are you gonna do? Do you understand the opportunity here? Do you have any idea how thirsty Americans are for any hint of inspiration or leadership and a release from this choice of a megalomaniac and a suffocating gerontocracy? It is crushing our spirits. Feel free to ignore any obvious weaknesses in your team's existential fight for freedom and democracy. And then just white knuckle this thing till November. Or take the advice of your own candidate. So do you think there is any Democrat who could defeat Donald Trump other than you? Probably 50 of them. 50? And elsewhere in the clip he says, look, I don't know, just spitballing here, but maybe you could have all the Democrats come together in one city, (laughs) convene them, let's say in Chicago. Mm. Hang around for four days. Yeah, it's an idea. People can give speeches, present their visions, and then you vote. Mm. And the winner is the nominee. The crazy idea. Maybe you do it about six weeks or so. Just might work. It's just so crazy. It just might work. Yeah. Uh, but uh, importantly, uh, Charlemagne, let's roll him. All I hear is ego. And I hope they take him up on his offer. Every single Democrat who feels like, uh, you know, the Democrats can't win if President Biden is the nominee needs to challenge him at the convention. Take him up on his offer. And I can't believe we're just having this conversation because I've been saying this for several months and asking the question, are Biden and Harris a winnable ticket? And if the answer is no, Biden should step aside and people shouldn't be upset when folks say that, especially if y'all want to win. There you go. And Biden... You played the CBC card, the Congressional Black yes. Caucus card, yes. this week. Uh, he he still had the support, public support at least, of a lot of CBC members, and and very and a- very angrily was saying, like, I have black support. Yep. Like he was straight was that Morning Joe or wherever he was, you know, yelling about that, uh, and and that did seem to back uh, to back Democrats off a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Charlemagne. Uh, coming out so forcefully certainly doesn't help with that case. Yeah, and this isn't going away. I mean, yeah. these are all positions that have been staked out very publicly by people on their own shows. And so for the Biden administration to, and, and Democrats actually, to think that there's a way that they can get through this press conference, Biden surprises everyone, he's really good, he has a great night, he has a great day, gets through it, they can really tightly manage his public appearances for the next few weeks and into November, this isn't going away. I mean, it's it's not going to stop the drip drip of uh, comedians, talk show hosts, other members of Congress who have publicly said now, taken a really difficult stance in the Democratic Party. It shouldn't be a difficult stance, but taken what is a difficult, turning out to be a difficult stance in the Democratic Party, um, the, the spin is not going to work in the long term. And so if the Biden administration Democrats think they can get through this week, Biden has a good week, 
They'll be patient with the poll numbers. I really think that's what they're trying to do right mm-hmm. now is just say, we're just going to be patient with these poll numbers. We're going to get him back out in front of the public. He's going to do Stephanopoulos. He's going to do a press conference. People are going to see he's okay. Uh, we can kind of put the genie back in the bottle. They can't. And I think they're delusional to believe that they can sort of, like you said, white knuckle it mm-hmm. uh, out of this week, let the news cycle die down and move on. It's not going to move on. Because right, the problem is reality is intervening here and, and- it's rare that the bar almost makes a sentence here. The bar at the bottom there says, you know, Biden health polling. <laughs> those are the th- anti-Semitism, those are Brian Stelter. <laughs> those, those stop making sense, but uh, Biden, um, because of his health, is polling so terribly. Hey, if you liked that video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Breaking Points. If you want to see the rest of CounterPoints, go to BreakingPoints.com to become a premium member and get the full uncut show every morning in your inbox and on Spotify.